Hey everybody and welcome to the first Zenfolio live stream of 2018. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Support and thanks for coming and hanging out with us uh, today. Um, hope you guys all had a good new good New Year's and good uh, Christmas holidays. Uh, sorry we were kind of absent uh, through December on the YouTube channel. I had uh, had some emergency dental surgery as you can probably tell by the little swollen area right here that I'm still kind of recovering from but hopefully I'm able to um, Make it through and show you guys some really cool stuff in your Zenfolio account. If you guys have any awesome news about Christmas or the New Year's holiday, definitely please share that with the chat with us. We'd love to uh, we'd love to hear what exciting news you guys had. Or if you've got a lot of snow where you're at, like we do here in North Carolina, definitely let us know. We'd love to hear those kinds of things. And if this is your first time watching, make sure just to say hi and let us know where you're from. Um, so uh, before we jump into the topic that we want to talk about, about restricted access and things like that, I wanted to uh, talk about trade shows that are coming up. So I've got three tra trade shows showing here that we are going to be at. I think there's a couple of more I, that we're going to be there for. I just don't have the information. Um, but we are going to be at Imaging USA in Nashville, Tennessee. That's going to be January 14th. Um, January 14th through the 16th and we're going to be in booth 1012 and I think Cheryl and I both are actually going to be at that trade show um, so make sure you come say hi to us um, there in Nashville if you're at the trade show. And then um, we're going to be in Sync in Destin, Florida, February 23rd through the 26th. Um, I don't know what booth we're going to be in yet there, but if you're at that trade show, make sure you come by and say hi to us. I'm going to be at that one as well. And then there is WPPI in Las Vegas, which is February 24th through the 28th. We're going to be at booth number 832. And uh, make sure you come say hi to us. If you're looking for um, free WPPI Expo Passes, there's a link in the description below this video right now where you can click on there and get a free Expo Pass through Zenfolio. So make sure you check out that link. And then also in the description below as well, is links for all of the trade shows that I just mentioned. So you can check out um, Imaging USA. You can check out Imaging you I guess my audio is a little fuzzy. Let me turn the gain down a little bit. Maybe that will fix it there. There we go. Sorry, you know, after not doing the live stream for so long, things got moved around and switched up. Um, and hopefully that fixes it and lets me know. Somebody let me know if that made it better or if I need to turn it down some more. Let's try right in there. Okay. I talk really loud, I'm really close to the mic, and I'm probably distorting it, so I turned the game down. Hopefully that fixed it. Um, somebody just let me know. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be at these trade shows, and the link in the, the description below the video right now, you can find the URL for all of these trade shows, so you can check out their website, um, see what speakers are going to be there, uh, see what exhibitors are going to be there, and things like that. But uh, we hope that you guys come visit us at our booths there at those trade shows. Um, okay, so what we're talking about today is we're talking about using a um, access control setting 
um, that is not very commonly talked about and not very commonly used. It's called restricted access. Um, it's a little different than password protection. So let me get to uh, my dashboard here really quick. So if I go down into photos here, let me show you these two different access control settings so I can kind of explain the difference between the two. Here in this clients group right here, I've got a gallery that is um, protected by a password protection access control setting. So in order to set that up, what you do is just click on the gallery, go over to gallery access right here, and then you lock it with a password for your clients. Obviously test is a horrible password to use. I would recommend if you're setting up a password protected gallery to use a combination of upper lowercase letters and maybe some special characters or so something like maybe um, test one for something like that would be a much more secure password. But for this purposes, I'm just going to resolve back to test, hide that. So that is password protection. Now, that does protect your galleries. Only, only people who know the password and enter the password can actually get in and access that gallery. And it works really, really good for client galleries and things like that to keep them protected. But if you shoot any kind of sensitive subject matter or stuff like that, and you want to add an extra layer of protection, um, you can use what's called the restricted access control setting. So let me show you what that is and explain how it works and explain how it's different from just normal password protection. So if I click on the Smith Gallery right here, currently it's public, meaning anybody can view it and things like that. Um, anybody can, can find it. Um, and let's go ahead and set this up to be restricted access. So what we're gonna do is click on the Smith Gallery, go over here to Gallery Access, and then down below the three access control settings that you probably already know about, down here below is a little blue lock icon called Restricted Access. And what this does is this allows access to only your clients if they've registered a client account to you and they can only access this if they're logged in. So it's a lot different than just a password. Uh, with a password protected gallery, your clients can share that password out and things like that. With a restricted access gallery, your client actually has to go to your website, create a client account, and then be logged into that client account to access that restricted galleries. We've got a couple of video tutorials that go really in depth on this stuff and show you different ways that you can use it. They're gonna be coming out this month, um, but I just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit in general here today on the live stream. Um, so what we're gonna do is just click on allow access. And now let's say I have a client, um, let's say I have a client, um, Ryan Smith at smith.com. If I try to add that, it's not going to let me add this because Ryan Smith is not a registered client of mine yet. So he hasn't gone to my website and actually registered a client account with me. So I'm not able to actually, um, I'm not able to actually add him as a user for this gallery. So if I click on um, OK. Then what we need to do here is we need to get Ryan Smith to basically go and create a client account. So how do they create a client account? Well, they have to go to your login and register page. And this is why this is really good for, you know, if you shoot boudoir photography, um, you know, maybe part of your client process is you have them actually go and register with you first before you start creating their galleries. That way you can, um, that way you can go ahead and add their email address and set this uh, restricted access up. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this email really quick right here, hit cancel, and then if you go in your um, if you go in your account up to the top right here where it says website, there's built-in pages. Now I'm going to open this in a new tab, and this is where you have all the built-in pages that Zenfolio provides you with. Now there's a page in here that if you don't have this page as part of your site menu, you definitely want to add this page as part of your site menu item. And uh, there are really good video tutorials on our channel on how to do that. The reason that you want to add this page is because not only does it work for creating client accounts, but if your clients save favorites and things like this, that's how they access the login page to log back into their client account to access their favorites and things like that. Yeah, and as Shell's saying, guys, while I'm going through here, if you guys have any questions about what I'm talking about 
or if you have a question about Zenfolio on a completely unrelated subject, definitely please go ahead and get those in the chat so I can make sure to get those answered for you guys live uh, today. Um, okay, so we're going to go down here to the login or register page. And like I said, this is a page that you, if you're using favorites uh, or if you plan on using like restricted access and things like that, this is definitely a page that you want to make sure that you have added to your site menu. Um, so if I can get... Um, so if I can get Cheryl to throw out the link to that uh, video tutorial on site menu, that way you guys have it, you know how to add that stuff to your site menu, that'd be awesome. Um, but let me show you really quick right here. Um, what I'm going to do is just open this in a new tab, and we are going to go right here. And this is basically what this page looks like. And so if your client already had a client account, they would log into it through here. And as you can see, I've got this page added to my site menu item up here. But if we wanted to create a new account, they would just go right here. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say Ryan, Ryan, and we're going to put in that email address right there. And then I'm going to give him a password. And I'm going to give you guys two guesses to guess what password I use. I'm going to hit register and the password is at least has to be at least six characters wow that's cool i didn't realize that okay so one two three four five six one two three four five six all right so now i can register mr ryan all right so now ryan has got his account registered there and what i want to do really quick is actually now ryan's logged into his account so let me log back into my uh black onyx account here really quick um and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to add Ryan in as a registered user on that um, on that gallery. So we're going to go back to the photos page, which is right here. We're going to go back to the photos page. Click on that Smith gallery again. Go to gallery access. Click on that restricted access setting right here. And then I'm going to put in Ryan's email. Hit add. Now you can see I didn't get that notification and it's going to let me add him as a registered user and then I'm just going to hit save. So now I've got this saved as you can see the access color changed to be a blue lock which means it's available only to um, people who are logged in and registered to that gallery. So now let me show you the difference between what a password protected gallery looks like to a website visitor versus a restricted access gallery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to clients and we're just going to copy the friendly URL to that. So I'm going to copy this really quick. And then what I'm going to do is open up a new incognito window. This way we can actually test this out as a client would see it. So let me drag this window over here and I'm just going to paste that URL in here and now we can see what this is going to look like to an actual client. So as you can see right here, there is the Jasmine Gallery, and that one is password protected. There's the Ryan and Sarah Gallery, and that one is public. But if we go right here, there's actually one more gallery that should be showing up in there. It's called Smith, but you can't see it. So that's the difference between the restricted access and the password or password protection. Is password protected galleries will still show up. Now as a visitor I could click on this gallery and then I would have to enter the password to actually gain access. Um, but that restricted gallery doesn't even show up here anywhere in the thumbnail. So there's only two. How do we get it to show up? Well all we need to do is log into that client account that we created. So if I go up here to log in or register and if I log in to that uh, uh, that um, client account that we created, which was Ryan Ryan Smith at smith.com, and let's put in that password. Now, if I log into that, that's going to log me into that um, client account. And now, look, that gallery all of a sudden pops up uh, where we can click on it and access it. So that's the biggest difference between the password protected gallery and a gallery that's restricted access. The restricted access gallery won't even show up or be available for anybody to find it unless they've been added as a registered user to that gallery and then they have also logged into their account. Then they're able to view and access that gallery. 
All right, let me uh, close this out. Let me get back to my dashboard here really quick and uh, catch up to you guys here on chat. All right, so uh, Home Phone says aloha. Hey, aloha, aloha, Home Phone. Always gl glad to have you here hanging out with me. Um, we've got Cheryl back moderating today. I really appreciate it of her. She always does an awesome job, as well as Kayla does. And you guys are going to see a lot more of Kayla this year. We're actually going to be alternating back and forth on um, doing the live stream um, so that you guys get to see another face. You don't have to put up with me all the time. And that way it kind of frees me up to do some other things as well. Um, Home Phone said, hey, that's my password. I, I just made it up, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Al Guzman says, is there a better way other than creating a blog photo gallery and moving images to that unprotected gallery to use for the blog? So if you've got, um, Al, if you've got photos that you want to use for the blog and you're uploading them into a uh, password protected gallery and you don't want to have to, you know, create a duplicate gallery and copy photos and stuff in there. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can change the access to just the specific photo. So if I go here to photos really quick, let me switch this over. Uh, if I go here to photos and we click on this Jasmine gallery right here, and let's say that we want this gallery to be password protected, but we would really like to use this photo in a blog post and I just don't want to go through the hassle of copying it over to another gallery and things like that. What you can do is you can click on the photo and change the access control setting for just the photo itself. So if I go to photo access and let's say it's uncheck use default, we'll switch this one to be public, make sure that downloading is still turned off and uh, make sure that photo protection has the extra large setting and click save. So now everything else in the gallery is still password protected. That photo is still protected in a sense by the gallery's password um, as far as like people can't go into the gallery and access it, but it now frees it up to where you can actually use it on a blog post. So let's go do a, a blog post really quick and I'll show you how it works. So we're gonna go up to website, go to blog right here, now we're just going to do a new blog post, and I'm going to say um, Jasmine's Wedding. All right, so now we've got that up there. Let's go ahead and add that photo in. So if I click here and click the Add Photo button, we're going to go locate that gallery. So right here, Jasmine. And as you can see, I can't use any of these photos because they're password protected. However, that one photo that we wanted to use, we can click on it and we can use it. So we can select it. And now the one important thing that you probably want to do is make sure that under set options, that click action is set to none. That way it doesn't go to the gallery or things like that, um, just to make sure that your client's protected. But now we can use that photo from a password protected gallery in this public blob, blog, blob blog. <laughs> um, next, let me just change this image size to be uh, extra large. And then we'll just fix the alignment right here, center, insert. And then we'll go down here and just click the save and preview button right here. And then I'll pull this up in a um, incognito window. So we're actually viewing it as somebody that's not logged on into Zenfolio and you can see it there as well. So let me copy that URL file, new incognito window, and then we pull that over. Guys, if you ever want to test things from a visitor's perspective, so you can see what options show up, what options don't um, show up, all the, almost, I think all the browsers now offer this type of option. So I know in Google Chrome, it's file, new incognito window. In Safari, I think it's file, new private window. Firefox is, I think, file, new private window and use those to test things from a visitor's perspective. So you can stay logged into Zenfolio, you don't have to log out, and you can keep it up in your browser normally like you would, but then you can go to that incognito window and test things from a true visitor's perspective. So let's check out that gallery. I'm sorry, that blog post. All right, so the blog post cannot be found. Why is that? Let me, oh, you know what? Hold on a second here because I copied the uh, wrong URL. So let me go to, let me just go to my homepage really quick. And I don't think I have the blog actually published is why. So let me 
go back and make sure that I publish that uh, first. I don't blog that much, so um, when I'm working around the blog, yeah, so that's the next thing too is I completely forgot to publish it. I don't do a lot of blogging. I really wish I, I did have the time. I just don't do a lot. But So now let's publish that. So now that that's published, we can open this up in a new incognito window. So now we can go save it and preview it. And then now that it's published, I should be able to go to File, oops, New Incognito Window, and then let me try this again. There we go. So now you can see it showing up as a visitor would see it looking at a visitor's perspective. So an important thing to remember, don't forget to publish. That way when you go and you look at it from that visitor side, you're not confused as to why it's not showing up. And you don't look silly like I just did. All right, uh, let me close this out. But that's a great question. Al, if you got any more questions, anything I need to go back over during that process um, or anything else related to it or you know not related to it, definitely make sure you get those questions in the chat so I can get those answered for you here today. All right, let me click the welcome button. If you guys are back here on this page, you can click welcome. It takes you back to your dashboard where you can find whatever you need to find, um, access all the different areas of your Zenfolio account and things like that. Um, okay, so um, while, we're, while we're waiting on some questions to come in there in the chat, let me go ahead and take some of these email questions that I got over the course of being gone for about a month. Uh, I need to start windowing some of these down. Um, so the first question I've got here says, I'm looking to open a Zenfolio account. Uh, right now I'm using the trial. What is the biggest difference between the pro plan and the starter plan? So the biggest difference is really... Um, to see here there we go the biggest difference really is is that the pro plan is going to let you sell your work for profit um, give you some branding controlling so you can control your header have custom logos custom watermarks and you can also completely remove the branding Zenfolio branding from your website whereas the starter plan I mean I like to explain the starter plan is really for just um, just a um, sorry just a starter plan just for being like a portfolio so really starter plans are designed for having a place to to show your work you can't sell for profit there's going to be some zenfolio branding and things like that on it and uh, so that's the biggest difference is the pro plan is where you can get into customizing in the site a lot more adding more branding selling for profit versus the starter plan it's more for like having a portfolio and things like that all right uh let me grab another email question really quick um, so my next question here is, what all should I have linked on my website's navigation? That's a great question, and the answer can be really long or really short. Basically, first question is, is you know, what is your business? Uh, what type of business are you running? Are you trying to, you know, are you doing just portrait sessions? There are so many things that go into answering that question. Um, one of the, I guess the best thing is anything that would be helpful to your visitors without overwhelming them with too many options. Um, some of the things that I personally recommend is making sure that you have a clear and direct link to your portfolio, a clear and direct link on how they should contact you, and then a clear and direct link on where to learn more about you and the services that you offer. Those are the three things that I really, really would recommend definitely having there, giving them a clear, direct path where they can find the information that they want and things like that. And Cheryl already threw out the site menu, uh, the site menu item thing in, in the chat, so that tutorial's in there for you guys if you're not sure how to edit your site menu. If you guys want me to run through it a little bit, I can. Just let me know in the chat, and I'd be happy to jump over and run through editing your site menu and things like that. Um, okay, so let me jump back here and check on you guys in chat. All right, so um, let's see. Lin Long says, jumping in late, but just curious, what's the difference between making a group or gallery private versus hiding it from visitor feature? Okay, so um, basically the difference is, is that when you make a gallery private, when you make a gallery private, that is going to only make it visible to you, the photographer, when you're logged into the account. So if I set this Ryan and uh, Sarah gallery to private, 
by going to gallery access, going to private right here and applying that, then no matter what, nobody can access that gallery period unless they're actually logged into my Zenfolio account as me. Or if they're a, um, a user, if you have an advanced account, you can have multiple user accounts. Um, if you, and if, there are, if you've added a multiple user to your um, Zenfolio account, they can access it. But basically, they have to be able to get to this page inside of Zenfolio to be able to see that. If they can't access your actual Zenfolio account and log in on the back end, there's no possible way that they can see that gallery. So that's, uh, Lynn, that's what a private gallery is, is basically, again, only accessible on the back end. For the gallery where you hide the thumbnail, that's basically just it. So if I turn this gallery back to um, public, if I go back to public right here and save it, but then I click right here, this hide from visitors, that only hides that thumbnail. So that thumbnail will no longer appear in the group view, but if I send somebody a direct link to this gallery or if they've already have a direct link to this gallery, they can still access it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the cover photo here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to open this group up in a new incognito window really quick. All right. So we're going to open it up in a new incognito window. Let me paste that in. All right. So here is that group and my group pages. I'm not really happy with the way my group pages are looking right now. Let me just make sure that that cover photo is set to show. All right. So there we go. Okay. So Here's that new incognito window right here. And as you can see, again, we're not seeing that restricted access gallery, but here's the Jasmine gallery, which is password protected. Here's the Ryan and Sarah one, which is public. Now, if I go back into um, the back end here and I go to that Ryan and Sarah gallery and I select this hide from visitor option. Now, let me pull this back over here. Now, if I refresh the page, that thumbnail goes away. But if I had sent out the direct link to this gallery to a client, they can still access it via the direct link. So let me go here. So now we're just going to go to the direct link. And they can still access that gallery, even though it's hidden from view. Let me just do the visitor sign in really quick. So now they can access that gallery even though the thumbnail has been hidden from view. Now if we set that gallery to private, so going back here, just going to click on this, go to gallery access and change it to be private. And then we can go ahead and even set this back to show. It's still not going to show up on this page. So now back on this page here, after you refresh it, the thumbnail is not going to show up. But then if we put in, if I refresh this page, because this is that gallery link, if I refresh this page, this is also going to go away. Now it says access uh, to content is protected by owner. So that's the biggest difference. You can hide the thumbnail, but the gallery can still be accessible via a direct link. Or if you make it private, it's only accessible on the back end of your account. So anyway, I hope that explained it. If not, if you have any more questions, please de definitely let me know, and uh, I'll go more in detail on that. Um, let's see here. Let me catch up to you guys here. Um, Al says, I'm doing my first bridal show next month and would like to set up a pad for brides to sign up for a show prize. Can that be done with Zenfolio? Yeah, absolutely. You could do that in Zenfolio using a custom page and using something like JotForm. Um, I don't have a good example, I don't think, but um, if you go to jotform.com, you can create all kinds of free templates um, and have them sign up and things like that. And then you can embed it into a custom page. So let me just show you really quick a custom page. Let me go to website, custom pages. And actually, I think I have an example here somewhere um, of a custom page. Let's see. What is this one here? 
I think this one is a custom page that I built with Google Forms. So let me look and see. Yep. Okay, so this was a custom page that I built with Google Forms. Um, it is... Uh, the form has expired, but you can actually embed forms on the custom page. And let me just show you that really quick. If you go here and you get the embed code from like JotForm or from Google Forms or something like that, you can click source and actually embed that code in here. Now, one of the things I do want to point out about embedding custom code is while Zenfolio provides you with a place uh, to use that custom code, we can't offer any technical support on the custom code. So if it's not working um, or anything like that, we're not able to actually troubleshoot it for you. Um, you'll have to contact that third party to troubleshoot the code, but you can use it here. And then after you get that custom code or custom page set up, then you can definitely just add it to your site menu and send brides to your website and have them register that way. And we've actually got some video tutorials that are coming out next month, I believe, specifically on custom pages. We're going to do things like show you how to build a custom about page, how to do a custom contact page, and things like that. So make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you get those tutorials and all those updates and things like that. All right, let me hop back to my dashboard here really quick. And uh, let's see. So... John says, any new vendor print products coming this year or new improvements to Zenfolio in general? Um, I think that we are doing some announcing at the trade show on um, some products. I don't have a list yet of what we're announcing uh, yet, but John, as soon as I have some more information on stuff that's coming out this year, I'll definitely make sure that I let you guys know in the live stream um, for sure. Um, I just don't have that information yet. I know we've got some stuff lined up. I'm just not sure what exactly is coming out and uh, what's ready to be talked about. So as soon as I know, John, I'll definitely make sure to let you guys know here on the live stream. But always appreciate you, John, coming and hanging out with us and asking great questions. I um, really appreciate it. Lynn says, got it. Thanks. Awesome. I'm glad that helped, Lynn. Al says he uses JotForm. Awesome. Yeah, I use JotForm quite a bit. It's it's super helpful. You can do a lot with it. And then also, you know, when you bundle the functionality of JotForm with the ability to embed it into that custom page and make it seamless with your website, it works really great um, there. Um, just keeping everything in Zenfolio that way. All right. Uh, let's see. Al says, thank you very much. Snowed in here in Jersey watching you guys. Um, hey, we got some snow here in North Carolina too. So I actually, actually I just, uh, not too long ago, took my son outside to uh, do some sledding. And uh, he snuck around and hit me in the face with a snowball. Even though I told him several times, uh, my jaw is still a little sore. Please don't hit me in the face. Um, but yeah, he definitely nailed me once or twice while we were outside earlier. But yeah, I got some snow here in North Carolina. I'm loving it. You know, I... I don't like putting up with cold weather for a long period of time if it's not going to snow and at least be where I can go out and take my son and play in it. Uh, cold weather is just boring without the snow, I think. But now that it's snowed, I'm kind of ready for springtime, I think. So, uh, But hopefully you guys are staying safe with those areas that's got snow. I know uh, my brother-in-law up in Erie, I think they got like 100 inches of snow or something crazy. I know they broke a lot of records um, this, this month with the amount of snow that they got. All right, let me jump onto some email questions really quick, guys. All right, um, let's see here. So my next question here says, is it really important to have an about page or can I leave that off? That is, um, you know, totally up to you and how you want to do business. Personally, for me, I really recommend having an about page and there's lots of different reasons. Um... Lots of different reasons why I recommend that. Uh, one is just the SEO benefits of having a page where you can have lots of text. If you have an about page, that's another page where you can drop in keywords, talk about where you work from, talk about your services, talk about the types of different photography, the sessions you offer and things like that. And that's a page that's going to be really beneficial to your keywords and SEO and things like that. Are they a pain to write sometimes? Absolutely. I cannot, st I've tried several times to create an about page and I think it's still in draft just because I've hated everything that I wrote, uh, but I'm definitely working on it. Um, so, but I recommend it definitely for the SEO purposes, but also too, it's a place where you can explain to your clients, you know, a little bit about the services that you offer. 
Um, you get to, you know, portray your personality and get tell them a little bit about yourselves and tell them where you work. You know, one of the things that I notice a lot is when I visit photographers' websites, uh, one of the things that I am looking for constantly is where do these people um, operate out of? Can I, you know, are they available to do a family portrait session here in North Carolina or are they in California? And it seems like a lot of photographers... Um, fail to put that information on there where it's easy to find. And so I definitely recommend having that in your about page too. If you work internationally, then you know you can definitely put international. The more specific information you can put in your about page, the better it's going to be for your SEO and the better it's going to be for your clients because they get to understand where you work from, who you are, and what type of work and things like that that you do. And I would definitely recommend having that somewhere in your site navigation where it's easy for your visitors to find. Um, so if you want to ask me if I feel like it's really important to have an about page, my answer would be yes. I definitely feel like it's important. Is it something that's absolutely 100% required? Uh, you know, it's, it's your website, it's your business. There's no rules except for the rules that you make for yourself. Um, and so you can, you would be the best judge of that. Personally, I recommend having one and making sure that you spend some time really filling it out and putting lots of good information in there. All right, um, let's see. So Lynn says, no snow this side of NC in Charlotte. Ah, oh, yeah. So if you're at Charlotte, oh, man, that stinks. You guys missed out on it. Where I'm actually on, um, I'm actually towards the Raleigh area. So we got about, I think, like, what, three to six inches starting last night. It's, uh, that stinks. You guys missed out on it up there uh, towards Charlotte. Hopefully, maybe you'll get a little bit, but enough that it'll be fun, but not so much that we, you know, run into the power outages and all the stuff that makes that time crazy and not fun. All right. Um, let's see. Al says he's expecting eight inches a day and extremely windy, about 50 miles per hour. Ooh. That's going to be some cold, hard, stinging winds, I bet. Um, hopefully, though, that keeps the snow and ice buildup off of the power lines so you guys don't have to go through any power outages or any of that fun stuff. I know my first year in the new house that I live in now, our first winter here, we went without power for, I think, a week. Uh, our first winter here, it snowed, knocked a, a telephone line over, not a telephone line, a power line, and we spent, I think, about a week warming the house with kerosene heaters and doing the whole cooking on a Coleman stove kind of thing. And uh, it was it was fun looking back on it, but not at the time. Hopefully nobody has to experience that this year. All right, let me um, grab some more email questions. Guys, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered so far, anything that you're wondering about Zenfolio, um, definitely make sure you get those in the chat so I can get those answered for you guys uh, today um, before we have to jump off here. All right, uh, so the next question I've got says, is there a reason to have more than one price list? So again, this is going to go back to your specific business. You know, you can definitely make your Zenfolio account and make your business work off of one price list. However, in my case, I found it's much easier to have multiple price lists. And the reason is, is because most photographers serve a variety of genres of clients. We have our portrait clients. We have our um, wedding clients that we work with. And then we have, you know, Uncle Bob or Aunt Sue who, you know, bug us to do a portrait session for them and then expect the good old, you know, family free discount. Uh, and so rather than creating a bunch of coupons and going in and changing your pricing all the time, it's a lot easier if you just create multiple price lists to fit these different types of genres of clients or family members or whatever that you're doing. That way you don't have to go in and change things all the time and you just have the price list created. So let me run you really quick through the process of maybe creating two different types of price lists. I'll show you how to name them and uh, how you can use those two different price lists. So let me just switch over here to this view. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go into selling and we'll start creating a couple of price lists. So we're going to go to selling right here. Click on price list. And as you can see, I've already got quite a few price lists in here created. Maybe it's 2018. Well, it, not maybe. It is 2018. Maybe I've decided this year I want to rebrand myself. Maybe I want to make some changes. Maybe I want to increase my prices a little bit um, or, or whatever. Maybe I'm ready to create some new price list. Um, 
what we can do is, for time's sake, I'm going to start with this price list right here. That's going to create a pre-populated price list. I'll show you how to change the pricing and things like that. But then you can always use a blank price list if you want to just start from scratch and add specific products and things like that. So I'm going to go to add new price list right here. And let's say this is for my uh, portrait clients. And maybe this is for this year. So maybe I am increasing my pricing for this year. So I'm going to put portraits and put 2018. That way I know I created this price list for my portrait clients. And it's for all of my clients this year moving forward. And I don't get it confused with my old price list. Uh, and, you know, the reason I might leave my old price list online and not take it down is because there might be some old galleries out there uh, that I'm hoping maybe some clients make some last minute orders through or something like that. Um, so what we're going to do is just name it Portraits 2018. I don't need to add any products because this is a pre-filled, pre-populated price list. So all I need to do is go through and adjust the pricing. So I'm going to click on pricing on this first product category here. And I'm going to set the fixed markup to be zero, but I'm going to mark these up to, let's say, 600% and round up to the nearest dollar. Now, normally when I'm creating a price list, after I apply that pricing formula markup, I'll kind of expand this and come down here and kind of fine tune things. But just so we can make sure that we get through this process in time, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to do it with that pricing formula there. Uh, so one thing that's important to remember is every time you see a gray bar, that's a new product category, and you've got to make sure that you price each product category. So what I'm going to do is click this little thing right here, go here, and I'm just going to do the same thing. Zero fixed markup, 600% over base cost, round it up to the nearest dollar, hit apply, and then move on to the next category right here. All right, so there we go, 600 and round it up and apply this right here on this last category here as well. All right, so now I've got a totally brand new price list created with a blanket 600% markup. I'm just going to save that one. But now let's say I know I want to offer these same products to Aunt Susie and Uncle Bob, but they're going to bug me if I charge them what I'm charging my clients, even though I really want to charge them what I'm charging my clients. They're going to bug me, call me evil names and things like that. So let's say uh, I don't want to have to create a coupon for them to use every time. I don't want to have to deal with them that much. So maybe what I'll do is just create a price list for my friends and family uh, so that I can just create a price list and be done with it. An easy way to do that is just to duplicate the price list that you just created. And then we're just going to change the name. So we're going to rename it from being that to friends and family. And then we're just going to change the markup here. So we're going to go pricing and maybe for this, maybe I'm charging them like 50% over base pricing, basically just giving it away to them. Um, not that I recommend doing that, but um, it's just, you know, for my friends, family, and things like that. So I'm just changing that markup. And again, it's really important to make sure that you note that, especially if you're putting on a lower markup, because um, you the, last, the worst thing you want to do is you don't want to um, get this price list confused with your uh, client's price list and apply this price list to a client gallery and then they end up paying way too cheap for your photos when this is supposed to be for your friends and family. So I've got that price list created and I'm going to click save and now I have those two price lists and if I wanted to go on and create one for maybe wedding clients where it's different products, um, maybe I wanted to create one for sports clients where it's different products and different pricing, you can go in and either duplicate, change the pricing or just start from scratch, depending on whatever you want. But then you can take these price lists and you can apply them to the gallery. So if you go here to photos, and let's say that this group right here is where I'm going to be uploading all of my portrait client groups. I can just go to pricing, 
select allow ordering from my price list and then choose that portrait 2018 price list and hit save and now any new gallery that I upload into that group will automatically have that price list applied to it or if the gallery is following the group price list settings it's going to convert over to that price list as well so if I click on this gallery and we go down here you can see this one had its own price list setting but if I click on that and say same as containing group it will switch over to be using that portrait 2018 and then if I would what I usually do is create a group for my friends and family galleries and apply that price list to it as well all right let me jump back to my dashboard really quick hopefully that answered that question about having multiple price lists if you guys have any questions anything I need to go through further detail definitely let me know let me uh, jump over here to chat and check in on you guys here. Uh, Lynn says, from experience, if you have images that you forgot to hide from Google, once you change the group gallery images visibility in search and metadata, it takes about 72 hours for the spiders to uncache it. That's uh, totally on Google, Lynn. I've never ran into that issue um, just because I don't have... I don't have those types of clients where I have to worry about it. But um, if you do have that issue, again, that's going to be totally on Google on how quickly they recrawl and um, get rid of those images and realize that they're no longer available. Um, one of the things that I recommend doing is if you ever have an issue where it's kind of you kind of forget uh, to do that, if you get out of a habit or get not out of a habit, if you get into the habit of creating new galleries from the dashboard right here, Using this create new gallery, you can actually apply all the protection you need to the gallery before you upload the photos, and that way they never actually get indexed by Google and things like that. So um, any kind of gallery that needs a uh, password protection, such as a boudoir gallery or things like that, if you upload it right here, just go to create new gallery, and then you're going to give the gallery a name, all this good stuff here. Then if you go to next, you can choose where you want that gallery to go and hit next and then right here you can put protect with a password and then you can uncheck show and search results and uncheck this and then that gallery before you even upload the images you can add a watermark then you go to continue to upload and now you add the images in and all of the protection and things like that are already on the gallery and apply to your images before they're even actually on Zenfolio. So if you're uploading a lot of, um, you know, sensitive subject matter and things like that, you can definitely go that route if you want. Or uh, what you can do is, let me just click done. What you can do, um, another way to do it too to make sure that that never happens is create a special group for those types of clients. So if you go here and you say new group, and let's just say, um, we'll call it boudoir, let's see here, boudoir right there. And we will, um, and what you do is just set this group up. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So what you want to do is just set this group up, and then anytime you upload galleries that are sensitive subject matter, as long as you create them and upload them into this group, then they're going to be protected. So you click on this group right here go to group access and maybe set it to private um, go to search and metadata make sure that it's not included in any searches you can uncheck all these options as well and then you can click save so now whenever you upload a new gallery into this group it automatically will take its settings on so if I go here and I say new gallery and let's say this is um, Samantha or let's just say Sam. We'll just say Sam. This is Sam's boudoir session, and we're about to upload the photos. Well, if you look, when I created that gallery, it instantly became private. But not only did it instantly become private, it also instantly set it to not be included in any search results. So now you upload the photos, and then after the photos are uploaded, once you're ready to share it with the, the client, then you would just come over here, change it to password protection, save it and then send it out to the client and doing this will prevent that 
that uh, you know, I've I've talked to a lot of people who've had that happen where they forgot to set the protection up and things like that. Getting in the habit of doing things this way will prevent that from happening in the future. Because uh, I know at times it can be a, definitely a messy situation if that does happen. It happens quite a bit. People just forget to do it. They upload the photos, and then you know, a few days later, they got the client emailing them saying, "Hey, my photos are showing up on the search engine." And uh, what happened was that the gallery wasn't set up to be password protected or something like that. So those two ways right there will really prevent you from hopefully running into those issues in the future. Personally, I use the group setting and then upload all the galleries into that group, but also using that create new gallery from the dashboard can help you as well. All right, uh, but that is a great point to bring up, and um, we've got some uh, video tutorials on that as well. There's one called Creating a Secure Client Galleries. Um, if Cheryl can throw that out in the chat, it'll walk you through some of what I just showed you. And then we've also got some of those restricted access uh, video tutorials that are going to be coming out as well. But definitely a great point to bring up, and I appreciate that. Um, okay, let me jump over and grab uh, some email questions really quick. All right, uh, so the next question here I have says, how can I personalize the URL to my client's gallery? The P84848339 is hard for them to remember. Yeah, that was hard for me to say. Um, so yeah, you can personalize your client's URLs, make it a little bit more friendly, easy for them to remember, and kind of add a personal touch to them as well. Uh, let me show you how to do that. <clears throat> let me just grab a drink. So if you've got a client and you want to send them the gallery URL, but you'd like to personalize it, make it a little bit, um, you know, easy to remember and things like that, you can do this with the sharing and client access uh, setting. So if you click on a gallery right here on the left, you can go over here and go down to sharing and client access. And um, let me just delete this right here. So for a gallery that you just uploaded, if you've never changed this setting, it's going to be, the URL is going to be whatever your URL is, and then P, blah, 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 a bunch of numbers. And as this person said, it's hard for the client to remember, and it's it doesn't mean anything. Well, if you want to personalize it, all you have to do is give it a gallery ID. So in this case, I'll say Jasmine. And now the URL becomes blackonyx.zenfolio.com dot com forward slash jasmine instead of a bunch of those random numbers and this is also how you create the gallery id if you're using client access as well so once you've got that set up you just click save and now your client can access that from that friendly url so if we go here add file new incognito window i'm just going to paste that in let me show you guys what that looks like and hit enter and then it's going to go to where they have to enter the password or whatever type of gallery it is so great question It's definitely a really cool feature to use um, it makes it nice and friendly and the really cool thing too is if you have a client who's going to be having a lot of repeat sessions with you maybe you're working with some models or something like that and you know that this client's going to have several sessions with you you can create a client group just for them so let's say that this clients group right here is actually for one family and uh, I want them to be able to easily access all these galleries well, I can actually apply a gallery ID to the group and make the group's URL easy for them to remember where, then, where then they can see all of the galleries. So if I click on clients, we can go over here to sharing and client access, and then I could say Smith family, and it's gonna change that URL as well. If you work with a sports team and um, you know that you're gonna be uploading lots of uh, galleries for their different games and things like that. This is a really good way to give them one link that they have to remember and one link that they can go to, and then they can see all of their galleries there on that one link. All right, guys, we got about five more minutes left, five or six more minutes left, so if you have any last-minute questions, definitely please feel free to get those in chat. Um, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, definitely make sure that you click the subscribe button. We've got some really cool content for you guys this year. Um, just yesterday, in fact, there was a really cool video that published all about developing your ideal client where I sat down and talked to a photographer, Anna Teresa, um, who has 
this crazy marketing degree and stuff like that. And we talked about developing ideal clients uh, and the process of that. You should definitely check that video out on the channel. But if you're not subscribed, make sure you click that orange Zenfolio logo down here. Um, um, that way you're subscribed and that way you get the new video tutorials and then you get notifications when we go live and things like that. Also, guys, we are in iTunes, so if you go into iTunes, go to the podcast directory, you can search Zenfolio Video Tutorials, and there you can subscribe to us. The cool thing about that is it's going to instantly download all of our newest content to whatever device you're subscribed to us in. So anytime we put out a new video tutorial or after the live stream's over and the recording of it has processed, that actually publishes out to iTunes as well. And it goes instantly to your phone or to your iPad or wherever you're subscribed. And you can watch that new content there in iTunes. Um, so make sure you check that out. Again, just search Zenfolio Video Tutorials in the iTunes podcast directory and you can subscribe to us there. For those of you guys who are watching the recorded version of this, um, if you have questions that you'd like for me to answer for you guys next week, make sure to comment on the video below so we can get those questions answered for you next week. That's how I get all these questions is through the comments and things like that. So make sure you guys are commenting. That way I can answer the questions that you have for you next week. And uh, if you're able to jump on a live stream, we'd love to have you guys, but definitely appreciate all of you guys who are not able to join us live but are watching the recorded versions of the live stream you guys are awesome and you guys that watch the live streams we really like you guys hanging out here with us as well um you guys make it a lot of fun for us and we really appreciate it all right i've got time for one more question let me grab one more email question really quick and then it'll be time to hop off um so my next question here says <clears throat> i have some emails scheduled to send out in a few days is there a way to access them and edit them so it depends on what type of email that you have. If you've created your own like email scheduled marketing, you can access those scheduled emails and edit them. So let me kind of show you what we're talking about here. If you go to communication um, right here and let's say you want to schedule out an email to be sent out to all your contacts, maybe next month. Um, let's select our contacts and we'll go to send email. And then I'm just gonna use uh, email template that I made right here. Um, and if you guys are interested in making email templates, there's some really good video tutorials on the channel that will not only show you how to make video, um, not video, show you how to make email templates, but it'll also show you how to use them, how to create coupons and run your own marketing campaigns. There's a really great playlist. So you should definitely check that out. It'll show you how to do that. Um, but we're going to schedule this to send. So let's say we want this to send out on the 17th. And we're just going to go down here, continue to preview, and schedule this email. Well, let's say after we do that, maybe we change our mind. Maybe we want to change some of the stuff. How can we find that and access it and change it? Well, as long as it's in scheduled email through here, you can actually find that email and change it. You just need to go to email communications. And then from here, you're going to go to history. And then status, you just want to change status to scheduled. And you can see right here, here's the date that I scheduled that email um, to send. And I'm just going to click on this. And now I'm able to access that email. I can change the template. I can come down here and customize the text. I can add or remove contacts and things like that. And then let me get this out of the way here. I can then hit continue to preview and make sure that it is set up and ready to go. If I decide, hey, I don't really want to send that email yet, I can just click right here and delete that scheduled email and it's going to delete it and that email won't be sent out. So that's how you can access that information and change it if you need to. Um, definitely good to know in case you, you know, maybe you created a template, you wrote out an email and then you were kind of reviewing it later on and you realized there was a typo. Happens to me all the time. Really great to be able to go in there and change that information around if you need to. All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time today. I want to say thank you to everybody who came and hang out with us. Definitely make sure you to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, guys, we do the live streams every week, every Thursday. Um, same bat, same channel. Uh, for those of you guys who remember that, same time, uh, Tuesdays. I'm not sorry, not Tuesdays. 
Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific uh, here on YouTube. So we'd love to have you guys come hang out with us again. Uh, and thank you to everybody who came in and asked questions. And until then, I'll see you guys next week. Hope you all have a safe and wonderful weekend.